We're going to talk college football, coaching, hiring, firing, all the changes and whatnot. And, and there's some interesting stories, so we want to do a, a short segment on it. It's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi. Head over to tunicatravel.com to get more information on all of their six incredible sports books. Uh, you can find more information on us at winningcureseverything.com. If you're watching on YouTube, leave some comments, hit that subscribe button. We appreciate you guys joining us. Mark Richt resigned after a beatdown. And, and like I said before, we will do a bowl recap and, and discuss all of them and whatnot, it, whether it's two seconds or a few minutes. Um, but, I mean, 35-3 to three lost to Wisconsin. And Rick, so Manny Diaz goes to Temple. He's already signed the contract. Rick resigns or retires. And Miami pays the $4 million buyout to Temple to bring Diaz back. I wonder this about Mark Rick. Do you think that Miami went to him and said, hey, so defense is not our problem. We're good on that, but we think you might need to make some changes with your offensive staff. And he's got some family members and some close friends and whatnot that are coaching with him on offense. Always a bad deal. So it's just always bad. I wonder if if he just said, you know what? Screw it. Like I'm I'm done. I'm gonna retire. I'm fifty eight. I don't need this crap anymore. I've made millions of dollars. I would rather be at home playing with my dog, hanging out with my wife. Is that kind of what you feel like went down here? I mean, I don't, I don't know if they asked him to make changes and he just – I mean, there just, could just be just a lack of desire to want to do it. They might not have asked him to do anything, and he just woke up Sunday, uh, yeah, Sunday morning and just said, I don't want to do this anymore. Isn't I'm going to tell strange? you this. I mean, he's I, only 58 years old. Man, I, like, you say it's strange. I mean, that is like, oh, I, that's older than Bob Stoops. I think we've had this conversation over and over again. Mark Rick is a, is a man of seemingly great character. Yeah. Okay? He, now, I never want to assume anybody is perfect. Um, but, but, but the persona that he puts out there and that you've seen, everything that you've seen for over a decade, long period of time, is that he, he is a man of great character. We know how the sausage is made in college football. I think at some point in time for guys like that, if, if, if that is your strong moral fiber, at some point in time it just becomes really hard to swallow the pills that you have to swallow. Turn the blind eye to the things that you have to turn the blind eye to to compete at the level you have to compete at. And Miami wants to compete at that level, and I don't think Mark Richt is willing to do it. I think, that's, I think that is a number one reason why he was fired at Georgia. I could believe that. I think it was strictly not – it had nothing to do with his record, had nothing to do with anything. I think Georgia wanted to go to that next level of recruiting, and he wasn't willing to do it. I, you know what? I could 100% buy that. Because we know the shady underbelt. We, we are connected enough and have enough people that we know in our lives to know how dirty some of this stuff can get. And I think for for guys that, that try to live this real true – he is a Christian in an in, in honorable life. I think I think college sports is almost impossible for you to do that without compromising your integrity. At, at least at the highest level. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I think, but man, I even think at some of the lower levels, you got to compromise at some point. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're going to say breaking a rule is breaking a rule. Well, I mean, you and I. Then breaking a rule. You and I live all in a break, town where all the, breaking rules. the high school was recruiting players and got busted. Or high in, school. High school. high school. Olive Branch High School owns rental properties in Olive Branch. Yeah. To give families addresses. To get them to come to from Memphis football. or wherever to, to yeah. come and play for the so football team. Or at least they used to. They don't anymore because they got busted. And I mean, we'll you see. Go, okay. Um, okay. They didn't yeah. sell those houses. So. <laughs> uh. Speaking of that next level, here's a, a team that, that was at that next level and now is not. Uh, Ole Miss hires Rich Rodriguez as offensive coordinator, and they, they hired Mike McIntyre as defensive coordinator. So former Arizona head coach, former Colorado head coach, both elected to join Matt Luke's staff, and Luke, after his first actual year, 
was already on the hot seat. Correct. Help me make sense of this. Why do you join this if you feel like there's there's two there's two situations here. First, I love the hire by Matt Luke and Old Miss. Both of these. I, oh, you, I think both of these are great hires. And you get people I just with don't know how they real, did. Real real head coaching. They threw money at them cuz nobody else was hiring these guys. Uh, both of them do have it's some weird stuff in their past. Like it not not like far past. Like Rich Rod was accused of sexual assault. Yeah, Rich Rod's got the walking around his office in his underwear kind of thing that's yeah. a little strange. And then uh uh McIntyre like helped cover up domestic abuse by one of his assistant coaches and what yeah, so that got, became a big deal. Some, some issues. So yeah. no, it's not like anybody else was offering them jobs. Okay. So on on the surface of just a football related situation, this is about as good as old men's gonna get. Oh, you're right about you, that. You got two guys. One of the teams that I like to follow in the NFL is the Vikings, and and they did what I think is really smart. Saban has been doing this for a long time. He surrounds himself with like 80% of the Vikings coaching staff at one point in time were all former head coaches that they got yeah. fired. I I think that these guys, if they could coach at the highest level and we just drop them down a level, take a little bit of responsibility off of them, some of those guys are exceptional at what they do. So, A, I think – Great for Ole Miss. Big, big, big time hires. This is Matt Luke and the Ole Miss administration say, we're going all in. We're giving you everything you can do. Luke, if you can't win with this setup, I don't I don't know how to help you. Yeah. Okay. Now why You definitely did, don't have guys that are underqualified anymore. No, 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 not at all. Um now now why would these guys do that? Why would they take those jobs? A, because I don't I don't know if the phone was ringing with anybody else to offer them another job. That's that's probably situation A. But also, B, I think if one of them does really well and wins over the fan base in Oxford, but for some reason the team doesn't do well, I think they're the first people to get interviewed for the job. Because I do think when Matt Luke is gone, I think they will clean house completely of everyone that was there from the past. Yeah. And so so they would say, Rich Rod or Mike, this is this is your show. You're, You're now the, the head you guy. You're now the head guy. Everybody else is gone. Hire whoever you need to hire, and, and now we rebuild. Um, hmm. And I don't know that either one of those guys are the right guys to, to make that. I just think if I'm them, the reason I take that job is it's easier to get a job while you have a job. And, yeah. and or if you do a great job, somebody else comes calling. If West Virginia bumbles this next hire in the next two years and Rich Rod does well at Ole Miss – then I could I could easily see him maybe going home. I mean, I don't know. Did he burn enough bridges when he left there for Michigan? I, I don't know the answer to that. I doubt that. But doubt but you that. see what I'm saying? Like like it wouldn't shock me. Um so so you do a good you, you gotta take a job just to 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 build your resume to show people, hey, I haven't lost my touch. Yeah. No, okay, I'm with you. Uh you you brought up West Virginia. We'll we'll circle to that by going the route of Major Applewhite was fired at Houston. Uh, he I guess I'm working to, under the assumption that this has happened. This has not, and this is it, kind of it, yeah, rumor and speculation. Yet. So the West Virginia uh, job is not open as of we talking. we are recording on New Year's Eve. Dana Holgerson's buyout goes down by what two point five million dollars uh, after today, That's what I'm like saying. tomorrow. Tomorrow, so hours. Um, so Major Applewhite fired at Houston uh, a couple of years ago. The Houston president came out at one of their holiday parties and said, success has been defined at Houston as 10 and two. We fire coaches for eight and four seasons. Yeah. And major went what seven and five last year, eight and four this year ended up like, and just got embarrassed in a bowl game. Yeah. 70 I mean, to 14, I mean, yeah. something fierce. Yes. Like just, just set, set records for, for how bad you got. Now what's funny is by you, an all, by, by, by an army team, that hadn't put up a lot of points against a lot of people. They had no. a good offense. They were very efficient. Yeah. They had dropped they, 60 on anybody. Well, they so they beat, what, like San Jose State 52-3 oh. to three yeah. or something, but they, they hadn't beaten right. anybody 70-14. Hey, to 14. They, they hadn't scored 60 on anybody, and you yeah. just went into to Houston and were well, at a bowl game situation, and that, that, was, that was as one-sided as you could ever get. Yeah, it was, it was really, really bad. They scored I, 14 of those points after – about forty of the other points were already scored. So I'm I'm curious if 
some of this had to do with Applewhite and his relationship with his star player. Yep. Ed Oliver. Yep. The other side of this is... I'm surprised Applewhite wasn't fired on the sidelines. How you got to keep your, your highest rated recruit. How do you recruit happy. the next Ed Oliver? If, if you're the next Ed Oliver, if you're the next big-time guy and you're being courted by Texas and Oklahoma and Alabama, how do you convince him to come to Houston and you say, oh, we're going to treat you like a god. I'm like, that guy got, got kind of embarrassed on national TV. Yeah. No, 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 no. You as the administration comes down and you tell the next Ed Oliver, that will never happen again under my watch. <laughs> because we got this guy this gone. This guy gone. He's not even coming out for halftime. We're going to let Ed come out with his jacket. And and heck, I could just he's Apple White's out. Houston is a so Pete Thamel wrote an interesting article that I think verbatim called the Houston Athletic Department a clown show uh, because they are they were letting Apple White kind of flutter in the wind, like everybody kind of knew that he was going to get fired, uh, but they were waiting around for Dana Holgerson at West Virginia for his buyout to drop today. And tomorrow they would save $2.5 million by buying him out and bringing him from West Virginia to Houston. He's a former Houston offensive coordinator, put up big numbers under Kevin Sumlin, I believe, uh, and then went to Oklahoma State and then West, West Virginia, Virginia. Head, uh, head coach. And da, 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 da. Um, I think – so the major Applewhite thing was, was doomed to fail from the very beginning. You and I said that. We Correct. didn't like the hire. But – Houston had gotten tired of being the the stepping, stepping stone. stone. Yeah, the the jumping off point because Kevin Sumlin and Herman. Uh, 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 Tom Herman, who who was the one before Sumlin though? Art Browse. Art Browse. Um, all it. these guys that that jump up to the next level once they they all get here. And Houston thought, well, it's not these guys; it's us. So we can just hire anybody, and that is. Very obviously not the case. You got to have the right guy. Uh, this was bungled from the beginning, and they put a coach in. They're going to have to pay Applewhite pretty. Good. So let me let me ask you a but, question. But, let's but not let's get much. back to Pete. Let's get back to Pete Thamel's argue ar, ar, article. And what do you think about the athletic department kind of letting him flutter in the wind, whatever, and and then waiting till today or tomorrow to to go after Dana? I am okay with waiting to go after Dana. I think the moment that it becomes public knowledge that that Applewhite's going to be fired, you have to do it then. You cannot let this guy just sit for like a week because it had been like a week. You know, we everybody knew forever. It, you got to cut bait then, like and and then go through quote coaching searches and and whatever. Uh, but if if you were going to make that kind of play, the reason that they call him a clown show is. The AD is the emptiest AD in the country because uh, Mr. Fertitta, who owns the Houston Rockets, runs that athletic department. He throws in all of his money, and he makes the calls. He's the one that got Kelvin Sampson hired for the basketball program. He was going to try and keep Herman. Now, his pockets are not as deep as... Texas. Texas. All, all of the state of Texas. But but they were going to offer Herman like $5 million a know. year, which is absurd for a group of five schools. So well, Memphis was going to do it with Cal. Uh, yeah. I mean, it went, once you got boosters that big, and, and if you're winning at that level, I mean, it makes sense. So so here's here's my thought, my opinion on it. And, th- and I know this is very unpopular. If I was ever in an athletic director's chair, I would be very open and honest with my coaches especially the head coach. We would have a good working relationship, but I would let him know you could regardless of what your buyout is, you can walk out that door in any minute and leave me twisted in the wind. Because if you choose to walk out that door and somebody pays that buyout, somebody's willing to pay that buyout. Yeah. The, the money doesn't if you're a big time athletic department, the money doesn't fix my problem. Like Temple, they're about to get 6.5 million dollars for two coaches over the next, you know, whatever here. Like yeah. That fixes a lot of problems at Temple. But, see, you're Houston. You're already at that big money level. The money doesn't solve your problem. Yeah. So I don't, I don't care about the buyout. We're going to have a very open, honest relationship. I'm happy with you. You are going nowhere. Every year I am going to be meeting with, athletic, uh, with, with agents to find out who's interested in this job. Yeah. I'm not looking for your replacement to fire you. You have to trust me on that. 
what I'm doing is making sure if you decide to walk out that door, I'm prepared for it. Yep. Now, you have a couple of seven four seasons. I'm going to be very. I, I would have been honest. Then I will be looking for but, your replacement. But your replacement. But you would have. I would be honest with you on that. And I'll tell you this: if I have no problems, this might be an awkward conversation, and most people would disagree with this. I would have no problem telling Apple White, "We're not satisfied. If we can improve, we're going to improve. Do you want to stay here? Because if you want to stay here, you can sit in that chair, and if I find somebody better." then we're going to have a hard conversation. If I don't, it's yours. Now, once the season starts and once I've made my decision of if we're staying pat, then it's yours and you have my full support. But we're not. Ha- you need to know we're not happy with 7-5 and five or whatever, and, and we are looking for the next replacement or looking for you to improve. Yeah. I would be very honest about that, but, but if I'm an athletic director, I am talking to every agent out there constantly seeing who's interested in my job because I need to know if Tom Herbin picks up the phone and says, I'm going to Texas. If, if Bart Bryles picks up the phone and says, Oh, I'm going to Baylor. I need to not be caught with my pants down. Yeah. I need not be scattering for a coach. And that's how I end up with major Applewhite. That's, that's a fantastic idea. Now, like, if, I like the way that now, you're, talking now, now your about big that. boy coaches, like your guys like Saban and Dabo and, and Urban and, 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 and Harbaugh, like you're never going to get those guys yeah. because they're not going to agree to that. They're just not going to be okay with you constantly. Look, but like if you're Saban and you're Alabama's athletic like department guy, you he has to like I'm not firing you, but man, you I don't know that you you tell me every year you're not going anywhere, but we also you also make us not put a buyout in your contract. Yeah, I just have to be prepared. You you're prepared as a coach for every scenario. I have to be prepared for every scenario. Yeah. What happens if you stroke out on the sidelines and you just kill over? I have to be prepared for you. you. Get hit on your way here by a bus. Like I have to be ready for all situations. I can't just get caught off and, guard. And the good ads are right. Oh, they, I don't think I don't even think the good ads are. I think they get lucky because I don't think any of these ads are doing that because I think they're so afraid of offending or hurting the coach they have. Oh, you so, can't talk about a job unless it's open. You know how the media just crushes people. Yeah, well, if no. the job's not open, you can't even. Well, well, we Alabama's can't talk AD, about that. Greg, Greg Byrne, has, has spoken openly about, you know, Saban is, is here and he is ours as long as he will he be wants here to be. And, and et cetera. But he's already – he's got a list. Yeah. And he's had a list from day one that is just in his desk drawer. In, in every six months, and, I, need and, to, I need to talk to those people. I don't need to talk to them specifically. No, just talk to the agents. I just need to communicate with their agents. Yeah. Are they still maybe possibly interested in this? Yep. And if you're Alabama, it's easy to do because you pick up the phone and call anybody, and everybody would be fighting and clamoring to get Which that job. Which is why the Ohio State thing was still kind of weird, right? If the Ryan Day yeah. hire. If and... you're if you're Houston, you need to be a little bit better prepared. Um, so I, I really don't have an issue with them kind of letting him twist in the wind, I guess, and and whatever. I'm very interested in this. If this happens, if Dana Holgerson takes this job, this will be the first successful Power Five coach to willingly step down and go to a group of five school, which tells me I'm on to something in that the American is is not far away. I think the other coaches around the country see the American is not far off from yeah. being a power five school. I think you're a power right. five level. At some point in time, we're going to have to classify it as something different than P5, G5. Because I, I but think... But the AAC calls it P6. I know that. Like but, power but, six. But I actually, I think... And I think, I think you should, might be right. Like, I mean, I told you from the get-go... I don't see the American being much worse than the AA, ACC this year and outside of Clemson and the Big 12 outside of Texas and Oklahoma. Like, I just no, don't. You, I mean, you might be right. You, the you, Pac-12, who scares you there? You don't I think mean, maybe UC, Oregon next year? You don't, but I'm talking about this year, right this now. Year, no, like, not, you don't think nobody. UCF, Memphis, South Florida, Temple, Cincinnati? Well, Houston, I'll, I'll like, tell you, you this. Think those like teams it, can score on those other schools? No, they can. but They're not going to stop anybody, but they play Big 12 no, defense. The, nobody the, stops anybody. The AAC in the bowl season has not 
lived up to expectations. Don't give me, I don't care. Uh, Those are but exhibition games know, that do know, not matter. I know, but they are they're still played and it still sets a narrative, right? There's for whatever I know, reason. I know we make a story um, out of something that we're just manufacturing. But yeah, that's, well last year the big narrative was the uh, Big 10 went was, 8 and 1 yeah, against the That's right. And that know, made them the, the best games. the best conference in football. Yeah. And now and, they can't get somebody in the playoffs. Yeah, it's just crazy. Crazy. Uh did we ever talk about Urban Meyer? No. Retiring? No, I mean we can hit on it quick. I mean, obviously, I think we've done it in passing and whatnot. But so he's gone. Meyer retires. They hire Ryan Day. Like immediately, they just pass the him torch. The Was that surprising to you? I mean, it's Ohio State. You can hire pretty much anybody you anybody want. you want. But they haven't in the past. I mean, they did the same thing when they lost Trestle. When they had to get rid of Trestle, they kind of did this. Oh, they just promoted somebody from within. Well, they did they for said, a year, but that I mean, that's because Trestle was fired in like May. Well, I, but I just think that's kind of the way they like to do things. I think I think they they've are got going something to, that's working. They've already got their network right. built. That's there. Right. I think okay. I think they work under the assumption that if Day does successful and and the network stays fine, then great. And and if not, then they'll find they'll find the next Trestle. They'll find the next Urban. Yeah, they, I mean, they got Trestle from. Uh, what was it, Youngstown State? I mean, that's not where you would normally get a, a major coach for somebody like Ohio State. Um, all right, that's going to wrap up the uh, the show, the uh, college football show for today. Um, I get, We will be back, I'm sure, talking about whether or not Holgerson did take the job. If he doesn't take the job, that's uh, going to be interesting for Houston. Uh, but I'm sure they'll find somebody interesting and – uh, we're not going to talk again until after the uh, national championship, are we? Nope. Whew. All right. Well, um, wow. Lots of coaching stuff. We'll talk more next week.